one man's angst is another man's opportunity. And Victorian anxieties were cannily exploited by the artist John Martin. In 1851, he painted The Great Day of His Wrath, a work very much meant for mass consumption. It was a barnstorming depiction of the end of the world. It's very much the end of the modern Victorian industrial world. It looks like a terrible incident in a smelting furnace. Inspect it more closely and you see that what he's envisioning is in fact a city imploding, consuming itself in a ball of flame. It's a wonderfully theatrical, in fact, perhaps almost pantomime-like depiction of the end of the world. Literally, it's a Gothic painting. It returns art to that most Gothic or medieval of subjects, the Last Judgment or Doom. But it's also a picture that seems to leap forward into the future. It was seen by eight million people. Martin toured it around the world. It was a smash hit sensation, a painting that predicted the Hollywood blockbusters of the future. It was a huge popular success. Why was that? Well, I think it was partly because Martin had tapped in so directly, so viscerally to a genuine popular fear that everything in their frighteningly modern world was indeed about to go wrong. But he also allowed them to experience the worst that could happen in the form of a work of art. They could look at it, thrill to the terror of it all, and then reassure themselves that, well, it's only a nightmare. But if John Martin used the dark imagery of Gothic to predict the end of the world, there was also another, lighter Gothic, one which held out the promise of salvation from all this.